All right, welcome to another episode of the Dope Podcast. I am Dean M. Chambers, and this is a podcast where we display other people's experience, expertise, and enhance your knowledge. This platform was created to help people combat the fear of missing out on opportunities and a central place for you to ask your questions and also for them to be answered. We're like, and we're like minded individuals come to get inspired. So our topic of discussion today is entrepreneurship. And today I got my guest, David Anderson from DACC Consultants Inc. And we're just talking about entrepreneurship because a lot of people in the space that I'm in where I'm teaching financial literacy want to get into entrepreneurship or even start a small business. And I feel a lot of people don't even understand the difference between the two where a mm. small business and an entrepreneur. So uh, what I found on the internet is a small business usually deals with known and established products and services while entrepreneur uh, ventures focus on new innovative offerings because of this small businesses, small business owners tend to deal with known risk where entrepreneurs face unknown risk. Mm. Can you speak to that? Well, let's say business owners from a jump. From when you say business, uh, it seems like you already have customers, you already have clients, you have a store, you have a location. Um, there's a whole ideal towards it. And it's, it seems like it's it's less risky and it's more comfortable when you're saying you're a business owner. But when you're saying you're an entrepreneur, people will look at you with skepticism. <laughs> people will look at you like you don't know what you're doing. Um, for me personally, my business only been one year today. And as we go through today, I'll tell you all the stuff, accolades I've gained and accomplished this one year. And just sitting back, every time I speak about it, sit back and just realize how far you came. Um, but I took a lot of risks this year. Yeah. And a lot of opportunities came. So I'll just say as an entrepreneur, you have to either be ready to face the opportunities or be ready to face the, the downslide. But you have to always be in the game as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Most yeah. definitely. And uh, what you said was key, where a lot of risk comes with being an entrepreneur. Yeah. And with a lot of risk comes a lot of re reward. So, a lot of rewards. Yep, you oh, got to keep that in mind. <laughs> a lot of rewards, but then also the rewards are unpromised. If yeah. you know where your end goal is, there are going to be rewards on the way, but you cannot look at them. They will come their way. Yeah, when, when it's ready. When it's ready. Yeah, when it's don't ready force anything time. before it's time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what made you decide to start your own business? Um... <clears throat> For a while now, I actually, I want to start this before COVID, like let's say a year or a couple months before COVID. Um, so when it COVID happened, it kind of just, it was kind of looked fast. Everything kind of looked fast. I was like, wait, this is the perfect opportunity. But um, the reason why I started it is because I realized that I've been, I'm like a resource for information and knowledge for some, for my friends and for anybody that I know, like I just have information. I will help you lead you to find that information. Um, there's that, but also, I have community resources, so I have employment resources and connections. So I have jobs being sent to me. I can help people that way. Um, I have a youth program, but now I want to work with adults. I want to have people that um, that actually want to take their business to a next level. I actually want to start a business. Um, actually, have to go through a whole process. So this whole year, I actually figured out that like you can't just take anybody as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, even as a store owner. You cannot take every customer. You cannot take every client. Yeah. It's actually going to have to be some rules, regulations, some morals. I'm yep. doing consulting, but even if Foot Locker has to have rules, if you don't wear a shirt, you can't walk in Foot Locker. Yep. So that's something you have to understand as you're walking through the year. And I'm very appreciative of that. That's good. So what are some um, consultation services that you offer within your organization? So we offer, first of all, we do like an assessment form. Mm -hmm. And then after the assessment form, we I ask, it's like 15 questions. I ask the clients what their goals are, their dreams, try to develop that three to five year career roadmap. And then after that, we have consultations. Consultations are about 45 minutes to an hour. We go through marketing plans, schemes, what your needs are, social media networks, et cetera. The point is to try to scale your brand to the next level, whatever partnerships you wanna have. But then also I actually do interviews as well. Um, I got a photographer, I do headshots, professional headshots in my office. Um, yeah, so that, those are, that's all I'm doing right now so far. I don't have no product or service to sell no product to sell i mean to say mm -hmm. this whole year but after next week by the end of december i'm gonna have a product whether nice. it be a book whether it be a planner whether like i know what i'm doing but i'm just having a conversation with people letting them know i'm giving free information ask mm -hmm. me questions i'll give you i'll give you that um, yeah because i noticed on instagram you're very inspiring with 
everything that you're telling people, right? So it's not just you're telling people, you're actually doing it while you're telling both, people. Both. And I would like to be reachable. So every time I go outside, I see somebody I know and there's no hatred on here for years. So I, I like that. You like to be reachable. People yeah. think knowledge, you own knowledge. Nope. Everybody, knowledge to be shared. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. If you, like, if you feel like that's it, that means... <laughs> you're not doing research at all i did a video everything i'm doing video on it because i'm like somebody's feeling that and i'm feeling yeah yeah most definitely you got to share the information if you're keeping it to yourself you're being selfish exactly yeah 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 and a year uh so a year as of october you started the a year as of october 9th so next week saturday amazing amazing That's thanksgiving something to be thankful for <laughs> definitely something to be thankful for <laughs> yeah and um you speaking to that, that's a lot of people, you having your own office space, that's a challenge in itself to have, where it's like, that's one expense, that, that's a fixed expense, you got to make sure you pay every month. And some people are not even looking that far enough to know, like, okay, well, how am I going to make this money to pay my bills at the end of the month or the beginning of the month, right? So, and it was so key what you said in terms of having that business plan. Because if you don't have the business... People need to look at that business plan as your roadmap. If you yeah. don't have the roadmap, like going to Canada's Wonderland, downtown Toronto, Niagara Falls, if you don't, like a lot of people, they rely on their GPS. If you don't have yeah. a GPS, how are you going to get to that destination? Like, Not, it's so crazy. <laughs> or you're going to go through traffic or you're going to go that way. There's, there's an accident. Like, there's a lot of things. You got to look at the GPS. Yep. Exactly. But yeah, yeah, even having an office with its own risk by itself, that you, you're right. You're a very bright man. It is a fixed expense. It pushes you. Uh, yeah so let's i just <laughs> it was good though it was good it is good well speaking to that it pushes you um it just fuels your fire as to you you know you just got to keep going and going and when people don't have that roadmap they'll ask a lot of people questions or they they skip the research part so it's like you're adding extra steps to the process when it's unnecessary if you just did your research beforehand. And also adding those other steps can add extra cost. And yeah. one thing that you don't get back that a lot of people discredit is time. Like yeah. time is not guaranteed. So it's like you got to do these little things in order to make sure you're on the right path if this is something that you actually want, want to do. So my yeah. question is, starting a business, what steps uh, should people take before even launching their business? Oof. You need to develop starting a business steps you need to take for launching a business. All right. So you need to have a business name. You need to have some so some type of social media schedule market. You need to have some type of team. You need to have what departments you want. Um, what are you going to be targeting? See so yeah, how you're selling clothes. Yeah, you're selling this, selling that travel brochures. But um, how are you going to attack the market differently? If you can actually answer that question first. What makes you different from Sally from down the street? What makes this KFC different from Wendy down the street? Um, then you're gonna sell because they're both food. But how am I gonna? Why do Wendy's have Twitter? Why does this? Why are they funny? When I'm on the road, I think about Wendy's. I want to buy a bit Wendy burger. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why I like what it is. Not seriously. It's a it's a big thing. So before you start, think have social media. Have why you're starting your passion, um, and who can support you, and then take one step at a time. To be honest, just because. People get want to be perfect like Kanye West. You don't see him for three years and wow, oh, perfect. Oh no, the album's not ready. Let me edit the album. Perfect. No, you gotta go through your mistakes. Yeah. What you did last week does not make who you are. It's not gonna be who you are next week or tomorrow, right? So your past only helps you and through your experience. Sorry. I also feel uh, going back to Kanye West, <laughs> people are are comparing themselves to those type of people where it's like. No, you don't know what struggles he went through and how he had to come, his come up or whatever. So it's like, you can't, co it's like comparing apples to oranges because you don't know what he went through, how his process is. It's like, yeah, he's gone for three years, but three years, every day he's working a bit, bit by bit by bit to add to what he's trying to put out there, right? You don't really and, see it. Yeah, like, it, it, it's funny. Social media, it's like the gift and the curse. It's like, you got to be careful what you're really viewing as to what you want to start and if you're going to be able to emulate that. That's true. But the thing is, too, is that social media people um, detach their, I feel like, their human emotions. Mm -hmm. so social media, first of all, when you post, nobody posts anything negative, really. It's supposed to be highlights of life. And if you do post something negative, you're looking for comments. 
so you can get like so you can feel good. But like social media, there's always a reason for each post. Yeah. Once you understand yeah. that, then you, you're good. Yeah. Fifty likes to take the the opposite approach, <laughs> just controversy. Yeah, controversy yeah. just sell it for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever. And so, what are some hurdles that you over overcame with starting your business? A lot, a couple. But I'm gonna go through whatever I can go through at the moment. Yeah. Um, uh, did, did your volume kind of went down a bit? Can you hear me? It went down. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you should be good now. You good now? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you ask that question again? Uh, what what hurdles did you overcome with starting your business? Um, hurdles. Um, being as a leader. Okay, there's a couple of things. Hurdles with clients. Hurdles being a leader. So like understanding how to dictate, understanding how to um allocate um responsibilities. Uh, it, it, it was hard. So I realized that you got to find people who are passionate. You got to be, a, you got to work with people who want to want to be worked with. And when it was funny, I have no male clients. Oh, wow. <laughs> I would say, I would say that's not my fault. I'm a, I'm a social, registered social service worker, not a psychologist, but there's a reason for that. I feel like the male testosterone, I feel like there's a lot of things that I get involved. Males have to see the Rolex. Males have to see that. Males have to see certain things in order for them to believe what you're saying or for you to say no so that's just how it is like the animal kingdom it's okay and i'm only ask questions but yeah so um going through like not being able to take some clients because i realized everybody just wants help just wants us to ask questions i've went through a lot of situations i'm happy went through this year um what else did i've been through location financial you, you have to be in the office you have to want to do it as you said it's a fixed expense um, it's a bystander role. So even you go into the office and taking a video, you go into the office with somebody else taking a video. If I take that video, people that have never messaged me will message me and ask me questions. Even yeah. though people that I've introduced myself as a business consultant, they're going to ask me, are you a business consultant? I'm telling you things that this has happened to me. So I'm like, the bystander <laughs> rule is crazy. Um, partnerships, you can just take on everything. Um, there are st stages and steps of partnerships. So even though you're verbalizing certain things, there is the after step, then there is the action, and there was you no. Know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things to do. I actually wrote that down a couple of days ago. Um, risk. I'll say putting yourself out there, because uh, my my real my Facebook name has changed to my real name this year, last year. Mm -hmm. So that's my first time in my life. But that's just because of how I grew up, right? And I felt uncomfortable. But once you realize, hey. How are you gonna tell me you're gonna be a business owner? You're gonna be um, this superstar, Oprah, anywhere, but you're scared to have your name out? You're scared to show face? That doesn't make sense. I'm planning on being bigger than everybody. When you hear my voice, I wanna know you know it's me, yeah. right? So I had to realize I put my name out there and everything. So that's something I had to get over as well. Yeah, I, I, I overcame that hurdle as well. I was like, everybody knows me because I used to DJ for about 15 years. So I was like- Oh, sure, you know how to do it, okay. Yeah, so I was like, but people don't know know me by my first name, and I can't um, be going into meetings where people are calling me by my DJ alias. So I was like, people need to know who my real name is. Right? So it's like you, you literally have to get comfortable being uncomfortable, showing your face, getting on camera, talking to people. It's like yeah, you know, in politics, kissing babies, shaking hands. You know, that's exactly. What, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way people are gonna get to know you. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, the the partnership thing that that, that kind of intrigues me. So you said not every partnership is something that you want to get into. Why is that? So when I say partnership, I always say sponsorships. So partnerships and sponsorships. Not everyone you want to get into because sponsorships, they can for sponsorships if, if they're too involved, they can um force their opinion, um, they force their agenda on whatever you're doing, the event, your organization, etc. When partnerships I was speaking on the process of yourself. You can't say yes to five five days a week, and then you have, and then you're busy. Like there's the developing flyers, there is a launch date, there is registration, there is event break. There's what do you want to do? What, there's a lot of things we got to do. So people get so excited. I feel like if you have your goals down on that on that business plan, which I help people do, anybody that comes in your way, you can figure out how to manipulate their skills and help your situation in your business. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you know how to provide them value, 
And through that conversation, let them know how they can provide you value. Yeah. So that's how partnerships would work and should work. But yeah, a lot of times there's a process and people, I think people forget about it. And they'll just do events and there's no registration. You don't know who's there. Um, there's no food. There's no facilitators. But all this could have been free if you asked. Mm. Right? Yeah. yeah. Always ask questions. <laughs> Always ask. Like, there are people that are vendors willing to, like, I have vendors. We have resources everywhere. Trust, trust me. You just got to ask. Yeah. And you got to be serious because people are not going to give unless you, you're serious. That, that, that's another thing. Um, people always feel that if the question that you ask is a stupid question, but there's no such thing as a stupid question. It's because, again, this is why I created the, plat the platform because okay. people out there, they want to know something, but they're afraid to ask people that question because they feel like it's a stupid question. Oh my gosh. I've asked a ton of stupid questions in my high school, in my college. I said, I'm the guy that's going to ask that question. Do you know how I got through college? I only did two-year college. I call it a two-year bid, like it's jail. I don't know <laughs> I'm telling you, I went to Sault Ste. Marie. I went to Sioux College. I played oh, wow. basketball. I worked. <laughs> I had a partial scholarship, played basketball. I worked, and I graduated. Oh. Understand? So the point is, is that I looked at it as a two-year bid. I said, this is about eight hours away. I can barely come back. And you got to have your mind straight. So when I'm in there, I'm focused on how am I going to get money? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do But the trick was... Um, I oh yeah, the reason I bring it up the trick was there's two questions I asked in class. Only two questions. I ask a dumb question, which means super low. Like, what is the absolute minimum of this question? Okay. And I asked the high. What is the absolute high, the maximum of this question? So I, I, I whatever topic it is, ask those two questions, and then you and that's it. Ignore everything else. I'm thinking about how I'm gonna get money in Toronto. Three hour less, three hour class. I'm thinking about how I'm gonna get money in Toronto. Everybody else is like, oh, miss, I don't get this part. Oh, miss, I'm like, give me the assignment, right? You already speak, I already know. Give me the top, give me the minimum, I'm good. That's it. So that's what I realized in life. So I, I always ask the dumb questions. People need to be open with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I was more so the guy that sat in the front um, oh. so that I can make sure. I didn't really want to be picked on at the back and I didn't yeah. want to look like that, that typical black kid sits way at the back, doesn't ask questions, yeah. whatever. So yeah. I kind of forced myself to sit in the front. The only problem was <coughs> I, I did it for two reasons to make sure that I can hear the teacher, see what's on the board. But then my problem was if it was boring, I fell asleep. <laughs> so I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep in front of the teacher. Yeah, It was bad, but I did it. I got through the classes, you know, so everybody, yeah. there's always a method to people's madness. So, yeah. And I was a person, I was always a person that like, I, I would stay away from my friends. Like sometimes I wouldn't really go to the front, but I was like, when I'm in class, mm -hmm. I'm class mode. Whatever you know from you outside, I'm yeah. a different man. So I'm like, oh, he's serious about class. That's anywhere class I go to, that's that's me. Yeah. It, 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 that, that, that brings up a key point where if others around you are not like-minded or they're not trying to go the same path as you, that yeah. could be one of your biggest downfalls. And I myself have gone through that. And yeah. um, it's, it's so key that because you're friends with people, well, as you use the, the analogy for school, just doing a bid, you're literally doing a bid from the day you're born or the day you start kindergarten up to whatever day you finish school. And True. people feel that the friends that they grew up with in grade one to grade six, mm -hmm. they have to remain friends with them. And it's like, no, you don't. Like you, you can be, you can be, like in in passing, hey, what's up, blah yeah, blah blah. But yeah. no, that doesn't have to be the person you're chilling with twenty four seven. Yeah, did so, not type to anybody. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah I definitely, crazy, I, I've I'm I've been through that for a little bit. Even though they'll tell you that, who this guy thinks he's so good? Why is he doing that? But I'm a person. If you talk to me, I'll tell you. I say, guys, first of all, in this area, I went the furthest in basketball. I want to say that. Second of all, why are you arguing about the NBA? I have never opened my mouth about no basketball in life. See, this is why I don't speak to you guys. I would like to know more about investments. Uh, I would like to I would like to do that. Until you uh, guys do that, I know you're not, I'm going to stand over by myself. And I, I'm by myself outside. So I verbalized that to some, some people that I know. It, it's Years You ago. spoke it, I didn't. I This is how I felt. And I was like, am I the oddball? Because I don't want to talk about basketball or sports in general. I never did. People get too mad. I don't even like to talk about people. I don't like to talk about guys. <laughs> what am I doing? Talk, playing sports? I, I use your boy in the All-Star game. That's when I played. Like, <laughs> why are you talking about this? <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, yeah, man. It, it's funny. It's just so, it, it doesn't add game. to my life. Like I was like, you know what? If it doesn't add to my life, I don't want to be a part of that conversation. It happens, it happens to everybody, I feel like, when you get to a certain point. Um, 
actually feel like I started awakening after one of my mentors, one of my friend, one of my sisters, older, um, one of my sister's friend, he's they're older. He gave me a book, Forty Laws of Power. Mm-hmm. I read that book. Have you read that book? No, but it's on my list. Yeah. So I read that book, and I think I awakened when I watched that. When I read it, sorry. And that was a couple of years ago. And after that, I realized, and I came back from Jamaica, and I realized there's four people selling peanuts on the same bus. There's this, there's a, in Toronto, nobody's not doing nothing. Nobody's not hustling. Nobody's not doing anything. Yeah. So I'm like, hmm, that's different on that aspect. Yeah. You know, it was just, it was just an interesting experience. Yeah. That, that, that's good that you're reading too, because a lot yeah. of us out here don't want to be reading. And it's like, how are you supposed to enhance your knowledge yeah. without reading, right? Oh yeah. Especially right. if you, even if you don't have a mentor, it's like, so yeah. where do you get your information from? Music. <laughs> But yeah, the 48 Laws, it, it really awakened me because one, I'm a history junkie. I love history. They were talking about all like war, this, 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 and that. Basically, it'll go into every chapter has a, a historical story that proves um whatever they're stating. But then basically each um law is just speaking about how to manipulate and get on top of people and, and, and be victorious. Um, they'll speak about how a poor man eventually over a year or two. Um, befriended the wife, befriended the son of this, da, 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 and beheaded the king and became king. But then everybody loved him, so they helped him on the process because he did certain things on the way, and the king was a tyrant. Like, they, they go through so, certain stories, and you realize, like, this world is manipulative. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's a scary, scary world out there. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. That's why you should have the tools to make sure that you're in the tools. proper yeah. place where you need to be, right? Tools, so, goals, friends, yeah. So, Question I have for you in, in regards to that, what are some of the no-nos you have seen with entrepreneurs that, that they make when starting their business? Some of the things that are don't do's when they start in their business, um, <coughs> not starting. Uh, <laughs> I think that's <laughs> number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably, I'm like, not starting. People say, yeah, I started a business, I started a business. Okay, you posted, but like, you don't start so like so start the business i don't even care if it's hi post h i hi post post my name is your business name anything post any i can tell you 30 co- um content creations post my problem is is that you know what my fun thing to do sometimes is during covid a lot of business started i like to go on instagrams i like to follow i like to like la, 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 la. and I, I like to see when their business has started when it ended how many posts they have if my business started in one year next week, I have almost 300 posts. I expect a lot from anybody else, yeah. right? And I I haven't even reached up the goals that I expect for myself. Yeah. So I'm looking at everything. So I'm looking at how they're posting. Um, look about who's around you. How can how do you do your research? Who can help you um, financially, but even emotionally with business before you start? Please be ready to make mistakes. Those, that's a no no, but don't feel like you're per- don't feel like you're perfect. That's a no no. Yeah. So no, you don't have to be ready to make mistakes. Oh, sorry. Um, I would say go please go to networking events. But what a no no is, don't explain yourself or your brand too long too much. Like uh you better have like a you have to have like a 20, 30 seconds uh, the elevator pitch. <laughs> yeah, the elevator pitch. And you have to have an elevator pitch for your funders are different from investors. And different from partnerships are different from clients and customers. Those are all different um, pitches because you want to get them involved in different aspects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it so far. Yeah, no, those are those are some good takeaways, and I hope people are taking notes because definitely, this is the information that you need to make sure that you're on the right path, right? So, yeah. um, oh, speaking to Sault Ste. Marie. Did you feel pressure to go to school and get a job after you finish um, college university? I'm going to tell you something. No, I'm going to say no, but I'm going to tell you something funny. Um, so I graduated as a registered social service worker. Do you know my lifelong goal is to be an architect? Oh, wow. <laughs> that was my goal from grade seven. From grade seven to grade nine, I remember. And I had to switch classes. From then I said social work, registered social work, whatever. But I want to be an architect. So the point is, is that that's still a passion. I actually just met an architect yesterday. Mm-hmm. I was at a baby party. Um, I'm a godson of something, of this child, sorry. And then um, the father was telling me that his, his daughter is an architect, just graduated from university. I'm like, interesting. So it's the second day, so it's reminding me, reminding me. Um, 
No. I didn't feel pressured to get a job because I knew what I wanted to do afterwards, basically. Mm. I knew that I had to get the skills. I only did two years, a two year bid. I, people are telling me to go get a bachelor's, go get a master's. And I, I, can have a, I can debate you all night on that. I, and I can, and I should, but what's my end result? You're gonna, you're gonna, that's only gonna incline me and make me believe in this, uh, to have to get this job now after the paper. I spend this money years, I'm not accepting nothing else but a job like this or better. Yeah. But what does that sound like? I, I that doesn't sound like something I own. It just sounds like I don't want, I want to get paid more here as a slave or more there as a slave. Work yeah. for your own business. The, whatever options they had a limits and caps they had caps so if you work for your own business it'd be different yeah it's, on, it's, yeah. On, it's limitless at that point exactly so i didn't really have a goal for that um i worked in middle schools i worked like i i, I can do it I, I know my work i've been working with youth for a long time but that's not my goal so yeah. everything got to take me to a step every job i had i haven't I haven't I, I always spent two years minimum yeah. i don't leave before that one year or two years then i move on yeah yeah for growth uh for me i got comfortable and what happened mm -hmm. when i got comfortable they not they didn't fire me they they downgraded my or they what's the word they used i want to use it, the correct term they they pretty much they canned my department i was like yeah oh, okay and that's when i had to start figuring out things with myself right where it's like i literally did every job to make sure that i need to survive and a lot of people, when they have that job, they they feel like they're married to that job, and it's like, no, I can't leave. I'm I'm committed yeah. to the job. I'm here mm -hmm. until it's sixty five. But then, at the same t in the same breath, they want to start that that business or that side hustle, right? So, yeah. how do you, how do you balance the the two of them, or even balance them and then make the business and work? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Um, to be honest, if you didn't have work, you have more time for your business. But how do I balance it? That's a good question because I realized energy plays a huge factor in whatever you do and how you do it. So I used to work a lot and then I wouldn't have energy at the end of the day. I didn't understand it. So anyway, so usually by the end of the summer, I would like uh, take away my one of my jobs and I'll have one job for the rest of the year. But how I manage it, you just got to know you're just 24 hours in a day. Um, if you work, you're probably going to work nine to five. That's long. If that, if you work shorter, that's cool. Work nine to five, cool. You have a lot of hours left. Even if you do one or two hours a day on your business, and I don't mean post, I mean just thinking about it. I mean watching something, I mean doing research. Even reading an hour or two reading, that might help you for your book and everything. I say your book, your business. But yeah, so that's what I feel like you have to do um, in order to just even have time. Um, don't try to do too much. Some people try to work 40 hour weeks and then try to have a business. I guarantee you, you're putting more effort into that man's pockets than into yours. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that, that's some some good some good gems there. And another question a lot of people always ask, or they ask themselves, where do I get money to start? Where do you get money to start? So, <clears throat> I'm reading a book called The Third Door. Maybe you should read that as well. Actually, I did read it already, but I did a review on my Instagram a while ago, but um. I always bring this back in because it, this analogy is just crazy because basically there's three doors to get into anywhere you want to go. All right. So we're talking about, you said, how do you get money to start? Is that what the question is funding? Yeah. Yeah. So three doors. So like in the club, there is a general entrance. That's what $20. Everybody waits in line. Boom. There is people who don't want to wait in line bypass. They're, they're going to pay money. So they have financial benefits, assets, but they're going to pay, pay, pay the bouncer. Then there's the third door, people who have the resources, people who knows the, 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 the bouncer on the side door, yeah. right? We all, know, we all know some people like that. So there's three doors. So for funding, you can get funding through banks if you have the right pitch. You can get funding through sponsorships if you're consistent. Like I've got part, we have gotten partnerships with UPS, with the captain of the Maple Leaves, got scholarships with them, um, MLSC, not MLSC, Argos. Um, we, we got partnerships without looking for it and we got partnerships while looking for them. But the point is they want to see your consistency. They want to know what your goal is. Um, they want to know you're impacting lives. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to, whatever service you have, if you're able to impact lives, especially youth or family or anything, if you're able to develop that in an elevator pitch, you can get funding that way. But then also you can start without the funding and people will fund you, right? So 
I'm not focused on the funding for this business, for any business, for any organization. I'm focusing on you starting. And then once your vision and your story is getting told on the way, then you understand that, hey, I want to do an event. Now it requires money. Hey, I want to do an event. Wait, I know that person that knows that location, that space. See, you're using three doors now. So yeah. you got to act like you're realizing that. Crazy, man. Yeah. Oh, some amazing gems that you shared with us, David. I really right, appreciate you. you for being here. I just want to acknowledge you for all the knowledge that you dropped today. And that wraps up another episode of the Dope Podcast, where we display other people's experience, expertise, and enhance, and, and enhance your knowledge. Until next time. Oh, David. Please yes. tell people where they can find you. Give them your Instagram handle, your website, whatever it may be. So that they can yes. get in touch with you. you can find me at DACC underscore consultants on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Follow me at David Anderson. Um, I'm very active and yeah, I'm right there, right there. And also, if you would like any consultation to your business, anything, please let me know. If you have any questions, free questions, let me know. Um, that's what I'm here for. Knowledge is not for me. It's for everybody to share. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. All right.